Motormaster is looking down. He's looking down because he's sad. He's looking down because he's sad because he is the failure. Though he leads the Stunticons, he is the failure of the Menasaur series. Sadly. This is going to be the GotBot true review along with some custom work that I have done. You might notice his shoulders look a little peculiar. Of Combiner Wars Voyager class Motormaster. Welcome back to the channel, folks. This is Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. GotBot, and uh, I'm going to ask you to check me out across social media. I'm going to ask you to, uh, you know, check out Machinery of Men, the newest part going up soon, and, of course, check out uh, my first novel, The Everything Factor. And this is, sadly, the failure of the Menasaur series. Here is the collector card for Motormaster. Nice artwork. The sword is completely different from what we got. The... Animation on it is, it's okay. Uh, I think it looks more animation accurate than exactly what we got in figure form, but uh, there you go. And it is nice art. <sighs> okay, I almost don't know where to start with this guy. He is riddled with a lot of problems. Um, I have heard, I do not have the molds. I'm not interested in having the molds. Uh, I have heard that the... Um, Battlecore Optimus Prime mold uh, is better than this. I have heard that the original Optimus mold is better than this because of remolded parts on this. And there's a lot of remolded parts. Pretty much everything, pretty much everything was remolded. Um, this is the earlier version with the uh, worse hips. Uh, they were remedied later on. And I honestly, I don't know why people complain about the hips. I don't care about the spaces between the ratchets one little bit. You know what my big problem is with this guy? His shoulders. His shoulders and especially his shoulders in Menasaur mode because they just don't hold and they like fall apart. Everything else I really don't care about. Let's look at his accessories. Uh, you know he got this beautiful silver blaster that has a, a gray handle that wasn't painted. I don't know why they didn't just continue the silver down there looks like they started to uh, silver blaster uh, you know again a, a beautifully uh, chromed out silver sword and again that's just a gray handle on it he can hold both of them uh, I find that with the sword you know you can't really put it in that way because the edge of the sword comes up on his arm so you kind of got to put it in this way which isn't ideal for being held and it's not real solid um, you know, so a lot of times I don't re really even take these apart. I say take them apart. That's right. They slot together like this. You you take the gun, you turn it around backwards. You take the handle of the sword and you put it in there. And boom, you have a bigger gun um, or a bigger sword. Uh, personally, I just usually get them to hold it, the big sword and call it fine. Again, it's a melee weapon, really. I don't... I don't care for melee weapons. I know Minasaur is supposed to have a sword. Whatever. It's a nice looking sword. I just... I'd prefer a blaster. Um, paint apps. The Unite Warriors version has a lot more black and purple highlights. Um, the arms are, are more silver on it. In the G2 box set, this guy is a whole lot of metallic-y looking purple uh, with some teal bits. And then we have this one which has a lot of gray, a bit of silver highlighting here, some black in the center, a lot of purple highlights. I love the Decepticon symbol on the chest. The head sculpt is very menacing. Um, I, don't, I don't really feel like it looks exactly like Motormaster, but I, I, I don't mind it because I think it looks really menacing. Honestly, of all three, I feel like this paint scheme is the most cohesive, uh, and I like it. That being said, in truck mode, I did add uh, a couple of slight, slight paint apps. So I'm going to give his paint apps, honestly, I'm going to give his paint apps a, uh, a eight and a half. A eight and a half. Because I know a lot of people, if I give it too high of a mark, are going to, to really say, oh no, the Unite Warriors version is way better. And some people will say, oh no, the G2 version is beautiful and bright. And that's fine. If you like that, cool. 
I like this look. So I'll give it an eight and a half. Um, an eight and a half in Menasaur mode, an eight and a half in this mode, um, an eight and a half in truck mode because of the couple of apps that I did add. Um, I feel like it looks cohesive and looks good. Next we come to poseability, playability. In truck mode, he is great. In truck mode, he rolls like a champ. He holds together well, at least mine does. Um, so that's fantastic. In torso mode, the shoulders don't really lock in well. The hips don't really do anything great. And in robot mode. In robot mode, I mean, the head goes, you know... The head goes left and right. It looks up a little bit. It looks down a little bit. I, I, I'm kind of surprised that the movement is so good for such a boxy head, but cool. The shoulders go around 360, which is nice. Heavy ratchets out. Sometimes I almost feel like I'm going to break something. Um, but if you like ratchets, hey, cool. Uh, nice bicep swivel. The elbow, it, it'll go 90 degrees. Um... And it's it's okay. It's just if you, it's a bit weird because if you bring it down, it can also go back the wrong way, and it's just a little strange. But so, so is the case with Optimus. It's just the way the mold is. Nothing at the wrist. There is a waist swivel, uh, so you know that's nice. Uh, if you really wanted to get a an ab crunch or an ab stir up, I guess you could break the mold and have them look up. Uh, legs ratchet out and back all the way. Uh, the knee bends a nice 90 degrees. The toes can even tilt all the way out. That's because of transformation, but still. Um, the legs very tight ratchet out to the side, but they will go all the way out. And depending on the version you have, either your ratchets are you know, proportionately spaced, or you have him standing close together like this, and if you go out one click, you have a a wide stance like this. Some people would like to have something more in between like this, and that's what they fixed with the rich ha uh, hip ratchets. I, eh, whatever, I don't care. I, I'm cool with him just standing up, to be honest with you, um, so that's fine. Uh, no problem there. Uh, so posability, playability, like I said, he's not getting a great mark. Um, five. Five. He has a lot of posability, but he just doesn't hold together well. Plus, in this mode, look at that knee. There you go. That's, that's how well, that's how well that knee holds. Uh, I could tighten the screw, I guess, in here to help it, and I might yet, but... Still, it's just, it's disappointing. Um, so right now, overall, he's probably a... Uh, he's probably about a seven right now. You know, he has an eight and a half, he has a six. He's about a seven or so, seven and a little bit, but a seven. Transformation for this guy. We're going to do him in truck mode. Uh, I'm going to point out a couple of custom bits that I did, and then we'll do him in torso mode. Um, and I'll explain what I have done up here with his shoulders at that time, too. So, what do we do with this guy? Well, you start out by pegging his legs together and flipping his feet down, uh, just like so. And there's kind of the back of the truck already done, to be honest with you. You leave his back closed up, you leave his waist piece flipped up. Well, that's the Menasaur waist piece. You leave all that flipped up. His head, <clears throat> his head, you really just push down on one side and you turn it, turn it around like so. His arms, <clears throat> you'll see really that the grill of the truck is here at the elbows. You turn them around for now. Turn them around for now, like so. And you can see slightly how this is going to kind of start to come together. You can unpeg the shoulders. And when you unpeg them, all you're really doing is taking the side mirror out of a slot that's on the side of Motormaster right there. Um, you push the elbows out. It'll seem like the arms are kind of bending back the wrong way. You can kind of leave them sort of mm, grilled there at the moment. And 
you split this joint here at the waist and you bring it all the way up. When you bring it all the way up, you're going to bend the hips down. So you're kind of splitting the waist and going back and then bending the hips down. You're kind of making almost like a... Mm, well, you make a 90 at the, the waist and you make a 90 at the hips. So you're kind of making a zad sort of shape, except you're there at 90 degrees instead of, you know, a full zad bend. Um, you take the knees and you bend them up 90 degrees. There's the bottom of the truck done. You take the front of the truck and you bring it forward. You take the front of the truck and you bring it forward. And when you bring the two fronts forward, you can start to kind of bend the arms down and underneath a bit. Bringing them forward because they're going to become the actual front of the vehicle mode. Um, you'll notice that right now it looks sort of sort of messy really it's just a matter here of pegging stuff together um, and everything does peg in pretty nicely like okay there's you know there's a peg here there's a, a gap here that it goes into and they hold together there's a, a peg and a hole here there's a peg and a hole here they will all go together nicely in the end so we bring all of that around oh and Really, you want to put this side in first because that Decepticon symbol, very little, little Decepticon symbol, will go kind of notched in right there on the grill. So we'll bring all of this together and we will peg all of this together just like that. And just like so. See how everything kind of, kind of just squeezed together there? No problemo. Um, that leaves us with the arm bits kind of hanging away here underneath. Uh, really you just fold those up underneath and then you take the sides here and begin to fold them up, sides here and begin to fold that up. And as you fold these up, uh, you have a little peg here that'll go into a hole up right here. You have another little peg back here that goes into a slot up right here under the windows and same on the other side. So we, you know, we'll bring all of that up and squeeze it together basically. And we bring it up on the other side and we squeeze all of this together like so and like so and finally you're going to take this little I don't know what you call it this little tab here and you put it over this little peg right here just to kind of lock the legs into the cab and you do that on both sides and put back the wind vane um, like so. My wind vanes look a little bit off because I have something jammed in there. Um, and yeah, okay, it looks a little bit silly. Uh, I didn't really mind uh, fiddling with the wind vanes because I said if I ruin them, so what? I'll just pop them off. I don't really care. In this mode, I did add paint to the windows. These, This window here and this window here was left gray. There was a little bit of paint back here and the front was done. I wanted the full side done, so I... Uh, I use some purple here and here and same on the other side and that's really the only paint apps that I added in this mode. He does roll like a champ uh, and it's great. Uh, I really like him as, as a truck. It would be nice to have had the, you know, the back of the truck, sure, but honestly, how often do we get that? How often do we get that with Optimus? Not often. You know, masterpiece. And some third party stuff and I think like Dark of the Moon Ultimate Optimus Prime and that sort of, you know, that sort of thing, but just for a mass retail release, we don't usually get that. Uh, though it looks like we're going to with the uh, upcoming leader version based on the Ultra Magnus mold, but that's a story for another day. Um, I think he looks good, and I think he looks imposing. He looks like a leader. I, I love the silver grill. I love the... Uh, I love the de little Decepticon symbol. I, I love the color purple. I wish I could have, you know, for my, my customer, I really wish I could have given the purple hair on the sides that same sort of glossy shine, but I didn't. Such is life. Okay, to take him from this mode and put him in torso mode. <sighs> Man, this is about to become a mess. Okay, so you split everything that you had done there as if you were putting him back in robot mode. You flip down these sides that were pegged in and you, you know, you flip the shoulder pieces back so that the side mirror goes into this slot. Side mirror into the slot. Side mirror into the slot. 
And normally, for robot mode now, we would turn the arms around. We're not going to do that this time. Not for Menasaur. Um, there is a peg here, and there is a little slot up here on the shoulder, and you bring this up, and it slots in there. And same on this side, and it slots in there. Next, you bring down the, the legs and the waist, and you, you know, you basically put his abdomen back together, and you split the legs. And after you split the legs, you put up the feet, you spin him so that the screws are on the back and the tires are on the outside. You open these out a lot, actually. You turn at the knee, <clears throat> you turn at the knee and you bring it down. And <clears throat> truth is, you should go out three. It seems really wide, I agree. You bring this piece up, there's a little slot here that goes into a spot on the leg to lock that in. And same on this side, a little slot here that goes into a, a peg on the leg and locks that in and then you bring down the waist piece you open up the chest you fold up the head of Minasaur and you fix his horns I guess you can close up the chest again if you want and officially there's the torso mode here are the problems with it uh, these legs are really really wide apart uh, splayed really wide apart I don't really care for this locking mechanism I don't really find it locks anyway he looks squatty as a torso like the body looks squat up for the huge legs uh, these shoulder pieces here I mean they go like there you go if they go like this you know because they swivel on here you can probably see this is what's pegged in this is the piece with the with the side mirror that's pegged into the shoulder and it swivels there for Menasaur or for Motormaster's shoulder. The problem is as soon as you swivel this piece the peg that's here comes out of the little slot that's there it just doesn't stay locked and I'm going to tell you now though you put a combiner you know arm in here and it should twist at the combiner port that's not what happens this whole piece twists the, uh, the shoulders are just terrible. So what did I do to try and improve this guy? Well, a lot of people have taken the hips uh, apart and fixed the ratchets and hey, you can do that. Personally, instead of going out three, I just go out two clicks and I do not uh, leave these pieces locked up. Uh, I find that it elongates the body a little bit and I find it helps with uh, posability. Why? Because now he can, you know, go out to the side a lot and you really don't want Menasaur splaying any more than that. Uh, you know, he can, especially if you get the skirt piece out of the way, and it does, he can go all the way out, he can go all the way back, um, and of course he'll bend at the knee. I just think that this is the best configuration for posability. Some people turn the legs this way. If you turn the legs this way, then to go out to the side, you got to hit heavier ratchets. Uh, going forward, you're going to have a weird bend right here. You know, I, I guess if you want that. Going back, same thing. It's just you get a really weird joint here. Some people have turned it this way. I don't like the foot on the inside. And again, it, it's just, it's weird and the legs got to be way too far apart. And some people have just kept it straightforward. I think that looks too much like, you know, Motormaster's just leg there. And again, it'll go forward, it'll go back, but now you, again, you have another weird joint right here that's gonna be very high on the thigh. So I put them out, you know, two notches, and I do this. I wanted to try to deal with the shoulders. And I, I looked and I scrounged the, you know, the internets for some sort of a fix. And, of course, you can always do the nail polish or the floor wax, you know, hey, whatever. And I came across, and I, I, I you know, I came across a couple of fixes where the suggestion was made that you drill a hole in the wind vane. 
Um, and I've done that on both sides. You start with the smallest bit and move up until you get something that's like a five millimeter port. Then I had a spear crossbow type of weapon for Transformers Prime Beast Hunters RC that I took apart to get these little five millimeter pieces. And once the hole was drilled to a proper size, I took these little pieces and put them through. The idea is that if you have a five millimeter peg, you can stick it into the bottom of the hand and it holds the shoulder more in place. Now, if I put a combiner arm in here, this is going to hold fine as long as I don't move it. It looks okay on a shelf. I just can't move it. You take the five millimeter peg that's here and you put it into the bottom of the hand like so to lock it. You do it on this side like so to lock it. I will say this, the longer, um, the longer of a five millimeter piece that you have, or a five millimeter peg that you have, like the, the more it can go through the hand, the better. If you have something that you can, you know, stick through the hand and have it come out the front, fine. Is this a perfect fix? All of a sudden now, will his whole entire arm piece, you know, move nicely, uh, or better yet, not move at all when we have a Combiner Wars limb in here. Uh, no, this is not a fantastic fix. Uh, it's, it's okay if your piece here is super flimsy and will not hold up by itself, it will hold it there, again on the shelf. Does it improve posability, playability? Not one bit. Do I regret drilling the holes here? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. It was, I don't think it was a great fix. Uh, if it works for you, great. Maybe it's just my version of the mold, my copy of the mold, uh, where it doesn't work that great. And maybe I did something wrong. But in terms of a shoulder fix, eh, you can try it if you want. I mean, it's only wind vanes. Who cares? It's nothing major. Um, but don't expect a miracle, folks. In the end, transformation for this guy it's it's pretty easy his transformation is pretty easy i would give his transformation maybe an eight overall menasaur or um, you know not menasaur sorry motormaster at best is a seven at best and that's being generous truth is i really want to call him a six i expected and hoped for so much more from this guy and it was such a disappointment such a disappointment and that is the story of this guy. As I lay his torso here, he's going to do this. And so he should in shame. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. We are going to move on to the last part of the Menosaur series, and that is the build video. And we'll see how this guy works out in combined mode. I will see you next time inside the videos. Thanks for watching.